to What Am I Rolling, a twice-monthly RPG one-shot podcast, hosted by me, Fiona. This week, I'm joined by my friends Frankie, Roche and Matt for Pride and Extreme Prejudice, a one-page RPG created by game designer Grant Howitt. The premise behind Pride and Extreme Prejudice is very simple. You are a lady of marriageable age, and... As with all ladies of good standing, you have trained in the operation of a massive war machine, a dragoon. The French have invaded England, and the family estate and all the surrounding areas are under the potential threat from the advancing troops. Can you and your sisters hold back the enemy with your family's heirloom, the dragoon, and find yourself a suitable husband? Pride and Extreme Prejudice is available to buy as a pay-what-you-want product on the Rowan, Rook and Descartes website. That's rowanrookanddecard.com. You can find out more information about Grant's other projects and one-shots on Patreon. That's www.patreon.com forward slash G-S Howitt. And Howitt is spelled H-O-W-I-T-T. I'll add links to Grant's Patreon on the What Am I Rolling website and in this episode's show notes. Okay, quick technical difficulties warning here. Due to this one-shot being organised right at the last minute, we ended up in our friend's kitchen to record. And... Unfortunately, someone started making dinner rather loudly during the beginning stages of this one shot. As a result, a small, but rather important, quite amusing part of the audio is lost a little in the background noise. However, instead of removing that section completely, I've marked it down in the timestamps and provided a quick summary just before it happens, so I hope that compensates a little bit for some really bad audio. Can't be helped, unfortunately. As Pride and Extreme Prejudice breaks up quite nicely into distinct sections, I'll go into a quick overview for each section before each part of the one-shot. One last thing before we begin. Naturally, there are times in this one-shot where the players, and myself, mostly myself, get the rules wrong or forget something plot-wise. Whilst we always endeavour to stick to the rules wherever possible, at the end of the day, we all make mistakes. And what matters most is that everyone enjoys themselves. So, let's start with picking the sisters. There are four to choose from, all with a range of abilities and traits. For our one-shot, our three players chose the following. Roche plays Rebecca Fotherington Botherington, the second eldest sister who acts as the Coracor of the Dragoon. She is in charge of operating the Dragoon's arms, raising the mech's shield to provide cover, grab and manipulate items and so on. Rebecca is known as the sister to change things and get angry. The one who does the sort of things that would upset her poor ailing mother, or any mother, if she found out. Frankie plays Martha Fotherington Botherington, the second youngest sister who acts as the gunner of the Dragoon. She is in charge of operating the Dragoon's guns, firing shots with the mech's artillery lance, unleashing hell with a shot cannon, calculating firing solutions, and so on. Martha is known as the cool, calm and collected sister, the one seen as condescending towards people that she thinks are beneath her. Matt plays Penny Botherington Botherington, the youngest sister who acts as the pilot of the Dragoon. She is in charge of operating the Dragoon's legs, moving the war machine to a new location, smashing through buildings, charging the enemy before they can get a shot off, and so on. Penny is best described as quick, precise and smart. While she often bulldozes through situations by ignoring social graces, she has a knack for charming people with her earnest opinions. So describe your character. I am Martha, the second youngest and therefore the middle child. Been overlooked my entire life, neither the loved youngest nor the oldest blessed with such responsibility. I am, however, in charge of all of our guns. <laughs> what experience would you say you bring to this team of your sisters operating this big dragoon uh, machine which was inherited from your families? Through being overlooked by many years, I've had much time in self-study, mm-hmm. much of which I spent in our family's well-known artillery yard in the back garden past the tennis yes, the Fotherington Botherington <laughs> artillery yard. Yes, yes I know it well, I do. <laughs> Therefore, I have had many hours of target practice, (laughs) which I believe will be quite useful when it comes to shooting the French in the face. Excellent, excellent. Okay, we'll move on. Who is next? So my name is Rebecca, Mm -hmm. and I'm the second eldest child. Really, I should have been the last child, but my stupid parents decided to have more children after me. But it doesn't matter. 
because I'm the best. No one can argue it. Excellent, excellent. I also operate the arms. You operate the arms <laughs> of the dragoon. Tell me, what experience do you have with the dragoon? Have you, I don't know, do you do like lifting stuff anyway? Make yourself really pumped up, so... Yes, we're used to climbing. Mm-hmm. We're used to protecting the others. Of course. With our shields. Shields, yes. Very, very important shields. Okay, and then... Hello, I'm Penny... <laughs> I knew it! <laughs> I'm Penny Pilot. Penny Fotherington Fotherington. <laughs> My mummy says I was an accident, but that's okay. I'm the youngest and I'm ready to go and I like to run around. I like to chase rabbits. I'm not really old enough to be married, but my sister says it's very important to keep the name going. So why is it that you, as the youngest, have been given quite an important role as the pilot of the Dragoon? Because Rebecca says it puts me down out of the way and she doesn't have to see me or deal with me. Oh, that's, so, that's such a... Well, it's, 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 it's fine. It's fine? It's fine. Oh, okay. This is a terrible girl voice. <laughs> <laughs> Once the sisters have been assigned, it's time for them to determine their suitable husbands and what the plan for the day is. To do this, each player rolls an eight-sided die, or a d8, three times. Then, compare the results to three different pre-generated tables, one for husbands, one for traits, and one for events. The games master will also roll a d8 to determine what the French forces are up to. Well, roll uh, your individual husbands, if that's all right. So if you get a D8 Ooh. for me. Ooh. So yeah, so you need to find a husband. And this chap is... And then you roll your dice. Penny, you've got kind-hearted, but a bit soft. Martha, mm-hmm. you had good-looking, but he knows it. Ooh. And then Rebecca, you the have got... This bastard the son of a Jew. Excellent. What's more, he's... And then if you guys can roll again for me. So number one D8. Ooh. Aww. Uh, Rebecca? Brimming with repressed urges. Oh my god. One. <laughs> I wanted that one. <laughs> this is, this uh, Martha? Studying in the occult in London. Oh. Learned and scholarly. And Penny? Uh, he's a widower. He means well, but he's a bit He's a bit depressed. Oh. Surely then he's a bit old oh. for you, darling. <laughs> he knows what he's doing. It's fine. <laughs> oh my god. Moving on swiftly, girls. Could someone... Oh, I only need one oh. person. <laughs> I only need one person to oh. roll this. So what is happening today? Go I want to go. Yep, yeah, roll for it. Two. Oh, be oh my god! <laughs> Walk around the garden. Is that, is that for all of us? Actually, what we'll do, we can make that as sort of scenes in a way. So we'll say the first scene will be sexually charged walk around the garden. Are there any other types of walks? <laughs> <laughs> Not in the <laughs> Regency period. Uh, Martha, if you roll for me now as well, see what else we get. It's a six. Oh my Dragoon god. Dragoon dressage competition. Fabulous, that'll be so <laughs> So we're having a sexually charged walk around the to gardens. To the dressage competition. To the dressage And then Peggy, could you roll for me as well and see what else we get? Uh, and then we go to church. No! <laughs> ah! I think I'll roll to see what the French forces are up to, because they will be like an ongoing baddie presence, I guess, in this. So I'll just use your dice. Uh, so that's a one. Uh, sharpshooter ambush. Ooh, okay. All the sisters' relationships with all the other characters begin at zero. At the end of each scene, each sister can increase a relationship by one point. The higher the rating, the more intense that relationship is. When a sister interacts with the other person in a relationship, she can add the relationship rating to her role. When a relationship hits three points, she can roll with advantage on her actions. But beware, such strong feelings are doubtlessly going to lead to problems. Now for the game itself. Each turn in Pride and Extreme Prejudice is only 30 seconds long. During their turn, the sisters must confer, then write down what they are doing, as best as they're able to, on individual index cards. Then they must line up the index cards face down in order. The games master then goes through each card in turn and adjudicates the result of the rolls. When a result tells the sister to mark, they must put a cross next to one of the problems on the list the games master has provided. When a problem hits three crosses, it poses a serious, and possibly permanent, loss to that sister unless quickly resolved. Problems can include A boring man makes his feelings known A gentleman's dark secret is uncovered Public embarrassment Your outfit is deemed unfashionable And so on. When the games master announces a sister's action, the sister must roll a d10. On a one or two, the action is a sizeable failure, mark two against a problem. On a three to five, the action is a standard failure, so only mark one against a problem. On a seven to nine, the action is a success, but at a cost, mark one against a problem. 
and rolling a 10 counts as a full success. Hurrah! What's going to happen is I'm going to quickly describe a scene mm -hmm. and then all of you have 30 seconds to decide on something between yourselves, like who's going first and what they're going to do in the scene. So the 30 seconds is just quickly to decide stuff and then put, them, put it down and then we can go through each person's action as long as we want. We don't have to be quick, as quick paced as that. So sorry, are we in the Dragoon? Or are we, Not are we we're just having a sexually charged walk around the gardens? I mean, if, if you decide to be in the Dragoon, that's completely fine. <laughs> we, can, we can find out how this works. <laughs> I have one more clarification question. Of course, yes. <laughs> so while we're making the decisions of like, uh, you know, who goes first, right, and what, are we in character? So am I supposed... Oh, a hundred percent. Oh, The entire no! day. <laughs> it is a lovely day on the Fotherington, Bobrington estate. The sun is shining, lots of wildlife, uh, you know, it's, it's a proper sort of Disney-esque opening to any scene. You three have been asked by Mama, Fotherington Botherington, to um, get ready for today, for it is a very busy day in the household. Whilst Eliza is away spying against the French government, you guys should be keenly on alert for any suspicious things going around. But it's a happy day, for you know you're going to meet your suitors and take them to show them your family's prized possession, the Dragoon, in a, a, like a dressage competition with the rest of the other close-by families. And then, rounding off celebrations with Evensong going to church. Who are the suitors that you are meeting with today? So if we go with uh, Martha first. You mean his name? I, you can describe him, if you like. Well, the gentleman who shall be escorting me around today is a tall, rapscallion of man, good-looking, but he knows it, oh. who has taken a brief respite from his occult studies in London to visit me on our estate this beautiful day. Oh, fantastic. And his name? Bertram. Bertram? <laughs> yes. Oh, Bertram. An ancient family name. <laughs> How about um, Bertram Smythe? Yes, that sounds about right. Sounds about right. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> so who are you to question the name of my suitor? Now, I would say that... Um, you have never met Bertram. This is your first time of meeting him. And the same for all you ladies, actually. This is your first time you're actually meeting your suitors. As you, far as you know. As far as, well, as far as I know. But I assume... Slatten. Yes. <laughs> Quite. So we, we'll move on, actually. So, uh, Rebecca, tell us about your suitor. Well, he's actually the fifth son of a duke. Oh. I heard a rumour he's a bastard, but who cares, as long as it makes mother upset. <laughs> <laughs> His name is Marcus Montague. Marcus Montague. What a thoroughly boring name. It's better than yours. At least mine has character. <laughs> At least mine has a legitimate claim to his family line. At least mine has money. For now, until he gets disinherited. You don't know that for sure, you're just jealous. Everyone knows that. So Nobody knows that. that. Yes, Peggy. So my suit is a German, uh, a German man. He, he was a bit common. He married rich, but she died under mysterious circumstances. Oh. I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's mother, fine. Mother likes him. His name's Frederick Fringlehorn. He totally killed his wife. Frederick Fingerhorn. Wow. Yes, it's, 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 he's very he's German nobility. Don't look it up. It's fine. It's, 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 and he's, he's dressed in black because he's still very, very sad about his, about his wife. Of course. And of he's course. trying to convince everyone that he's very, very sad. I think he's very, very sad. Excellent. But well, he's lots of fun. I'm glad he's a bit soft. Oh, he's a bit soft. I see. But he's, he's kind-hearted. I've heard much about the Fringlehorns. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. All three of you ladies, <laughs> take, take a moment to sort of get prepared, get laced into your corsets by your various... Some of us need longer than others. Are you talking about yourself, dear? Oh, um, why would I talk about myself in third person when you're here, dear? Because you're an idiot. I like the fact that you're all sharing the <laughs> same room and the same woman's just pulling you all together. <laughs> so you arrive just... out onto the steps, looking out the garden, and you see three men chatting in the distance. But as I said, you've not met these three men before. So, my query to you is that how do you solve which suitor is which? And I'll give you 30 seconds. Go. Obvious, we know their names, just yell their names. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that works for me. <laughs> but you need to do which order? Who's going first? Well, I want to Obviously, go first. I will go first. So Why I go would first, you go the young first? One. No, well, we've no. got to write it down. Who's going first quickly? Penny. You've got to give it to me. You've got Rush 10, first. 13, <laughs> age before beauty, 10, darling. 9, 8. Be quick, precise, and smart. Push first. 7, okay. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Yeah, Stop. So, what's the order we're going in? Penny can go first because she needs the most help. So Penny, if you put your sweet kit. <laughs> Penny rushes in first to say hi. And then... I'm definitely going to go, go next. 
And then Rebecca, second, because she's slow. Third, Colin, darling. Okay, so Penny. So Penny comes running in. She's, 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 she's not as refined as the other two, but that's fine. So she comes sprinting in, and she sort of catches herself at the last minute, and she sort of does sort of like a half curtsy and sort of giggles a little bit. It's like, hi, Frederick. I'm Penny, nice to meet you. Excellent. Uh, yes, yes. Cool. I would like you, then, to roll a d10. Okay. Yep. Straight down. That is six. a six. So it's a six, a success, but at a cost. So if mm-hmm. you mark one, we will go for If you mark one against a boring man makes his feelings known. <laughs> So yeah, if you mark one there. This balding, big sort of double chins. And then, oh, my dear! Moi, moi, moi! And it's, it probably embraces you, which you were not expecting. And you didn't realise, what through your letters and stuff, you didn't realise how much older Frederick was. I mean, you heard that he was a widower, and that kind-heartedness came through his letters, but definitely much older than, than you think. And you think Mama has not told the whole truth to you. Fr- Frederick! Fr- 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 <laughs> Lovely, 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 yes. Excellent. Kurt, so you stand back. Yeah. a little bit sweaty. I'm yeah, but very, like, it's a very sort of musty smell from mm. me. Imagine Colonel Mustard. Done. So, yeah. Okay, uh, Rebecca, uh, you are second to go, so you sort of take a bit more time, maybe a bit more grace, and uh, your sister Penny, and you go across and you... What do you say? Um, I yell, Marcus! <laughs> You don't I wait go. for him to come towards me. I see, so you stay on the steps. Absolutely. <laughs> you shout, Marcus. Excellent. Uh, can you roll a d10 for me, please? Oh, that's a two for the size of a failure. <laughs> oh. Excellent. Um, I would say mark two against public embarrassment. I knew it. <laughs> In your head, it sounds like, Marcus, oh, Marcus, Marcus! <laughs> it comes across as grating. And, stuff. and the man sort of cocks his head and he's like, Darling, it's so, so lovely to see you, but I, could you keep your voice down? I don't wish, you know, and it's very sort of condescending towards you, and you like, oh, and you kind of made it, you know, you see the servants sort of laughing, and you know, oh, oh, she made a total fool out of herself, shouting Marcus, really stupidly. Oh. Martha, what are you doing? Seeing my sister's earlier buffoonery, I stride towards the remaining man, offer him my hand. Darling Bertram, it is so perfectly lovely to meet you at last. Okay, roll the d10 for me. Seven. So success, but at a cost. Ugh. As you sort of walk across, you manage to keep all the dignity and refine, compared to Penny, compared to, <laughs> to Rebecca. But as you go, you sort of trip, twist your ankle slightly, so it's a little bit more like a graceful limp. Like, oh, oh. <laughs> Even though you are like the oldest currently, so you maybe need a little bit more help. So if you put one uh, mark yeah, against a sister injured, more. all of you do get one uh, relationship point with them, by the way, at the end of the scene. Oh. Yes, because you've made that introduction mm. to them. So you meet your suitors, and they all say, oh, shall we please show us around your estate? And what I'd like you guys to do now is that if you can decide where you're going to take your uh, suitor, and what you plan to say to them, and then discuss which order you're going in. Uh, three, two, one, go. I will be going first to get away from you two and the scene that you're making, <laughs> so we will be going towards the head Yes, maybe. whatever, no one will miss you. <laughs> I'm going to take him to South Garden. Yeah, see. you have no... We've <laughs> got this. 12 seconds. You can do it. We believe in your younger sister. I'm going to take Quickly. him to see the rabbits. <laughs> Seven. Six, see the rabbits in the garden. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. Time done. Sorry. It's all right. So you were going first, Martha. And we'll go for Penny. Whoa. <laughs> and then we'll go for Rebecca. Okay, so... Martha, you take your suitor, who we called Bertram. Bertram. You take Bertram Smythe to the family's famous maze. Tell me more about this maze. What does it look like? What shape is it in? So no one is exactly sure the shape of the maze. Over the many generations of our family, it's been built and extended by so many of our generations that no one's entirely sure what it looks like. (laughs) Funny story, but it was always a favourite place of mine, hiding from the rest of my family. Again, it gave me a place of solid contemplation. Oh, okay. Plus, no one could find me. So oh. that was always a plus. So are you playing like a, a sort of sexually charged hide-and-seek in the maze then? Is there any other kind? <laughs> I mean, I'm sure we're about to find out. Could you roll, <laughs> could you roll a d10 for me? Eight. An eight? As a success, but at a cost. Do I break the other ankle? No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> you do not break the other ankle. That would be an improvement. You gain a mark against your outfit is deemed unfashionable. <gasps> Hello. Fiona here, just going to summarise the next couple of minutes due to the technical difficulties. 
Martha was not prepared for the maze, and whilst playing a game of hide-and-seek with Bertrand, her corset gets ripped by the bushes and receives a mark against the problem, your outfit is deemed unfashionable. Meanwhile, Penny takes Frederick to see the rabbits in the garden, then tries to catch one in order to impress him. She succeeds at this, but at a cost. Her strong legs, used to catch the rabbit, show her up, and she receives a mark against the problem, your womanly disposition causes problems. She returns to Frederick with the rabbit, now named Blopsy. Rebecca takes her love interest, Marcus, to her favourite spot, a hollowed-out oak tree in the woods, for small talk and ankle showing. She succeeds at this, but also at a cost. Marcus reveals that, whilst he appreciates Rebecca as a true friend, his love interests lie elsewhere, and asks her help in aiding him pursue them. The highest slur! (laughs) So, I think you weren't prepared... (laughs) When you plan this sort of trip, you're like, I'll take him to the maze and I will try to, um, you know, entice him in something. But it's right, you actually don't remember this maze very well. So you actually try and cheat a little bit, like hide through like the hedges and like stick up and then, oh, twigs everywhere. But your corset gets trapped in like a couple of bushes. So it sort of rips slightly and you sort of come out very, you know, you're like, oh, you sort of patch yourself back up. But it's definitely not fashionable anymore, unfortunately. Penny! Take him off to see the rabbits and sorry and, and the garden. Oh, and the garden. Okay. okay. So tell us more about that then. So I, I offer I offer my arm. I say, all right, let's go. And yep. just sort of like march on, uh, and try yeah. to get away from the other two. And <laughs> this I'm assuming quite plump German man, Very sort of plump. just just <laughs> dragging on behind me. So I decided. Yes. Oh gosh, I don't want to give my life story about my childhood, which was probably only a couple of years ago. If I mm-hmm. Mum didn't really care what happened to me, so she just let me run around in the garden all the time to hang out with all the rats. Which is why my legs are so strong and I packed my frock up oh my just god, a little bit. Oh my god! And it's just a glimpse of like pure solid, muscle. solid muscle. <laughs> and then I see, I see a rabbit. Yep. Oh look, there's one now. I oh got really god. fast by chasing rabbits. So, and like, do you want to see? I'll catch one and we can, we can pet it because so, rabbits are my favorite animal. They're yeah. fun and they're soft, just like me. <laughs> Roll that then for me, please. Eight. So that's a success, but at a cost. I think uh, if you mark one for your your womanly disposition causes problems. <laughs> so you say to Frederick, she's like, oh look, a rabbit! And you sort of go, but it's, instead of sort of more gamely, you sort of like, you do like a full pelt. Your your um, leg day has really come into its own. You just leave them behind. And you're like hunting rabbits at this point. You sort of... Pack my skirt on. Oh, and just 100%. Like... It's way above the ankle level. So oh. it's deemed... Oh, saucy, saucy. <laughs> Dear penthouse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And you sort of maybe scramble in the mud a little bit and you sort of pick up the rabbit and like, ha ha, look! And the rabbit sort of looks at you and looks back at Frederick and Frederick's sort of like, oh gosh, you know, it doesn't know where to look. And then you sort of realise, you know, the mud is up to oh. your, yeah. Uh, his name's Lopsy. Bl- Lopsy? Lopsy. Excellent. Like Blossom and Flopsy. Like, it's Blopsy. <laughs> excellent, excellent. And Blopsy lives on my shoulder now. Okay. And then we'll go to Rebecca. Let's go to our favourite mm-hmm. spot, which is in the woods. Excellent. So describe these woods for us. I'm taking them to my favourite spot, uh-huh. where I usually go to show them my ankles. <laughs> <laughs> my goodness, okay. <laughs> yeah, don't tell mother, of course. I would never dream of telling my mum, of course. <laughs> what does the space look like? Is it very well lit? Is so it very dark? Mm, I'm assuming we're in daylight? Yeah, yeah, it's, I'd say it's mid-morning, because okay. we've not gone... Got, so not there's an old oak tree that grew there, and it sort of hollows out itself. You know, nature's quite wonderful. Mm-hmm. And there's... A, Neat little spot where you can go inside. Yes, it's quite dirty, but you know. Mm-hmm. What do you do when you get to the wood when you take um, Marcus? So you take Marcus to the wood, you get inside, you talk for a bit, very small talk, and then mm-hmm. I begin to lift my dress. Do you just, like, you start saying, the weather's lovely today, isn't it, Marcus? And then just let yes. out like, like, one ankle, just like. And then he goes, oh, yes, it's very nice. Mm-hmm. Okay, roll a d10 for me, please. Six. Six. Okay, success, but at a cost. Oh my god. Okay. Would you put a mark next to a gentleman's secret? Is, a dark yes. secret is un- uncovered. No! What's your secret? <laughs> one. Just one? Yeah, just one, don't worry. God damn it, yes. Oh, yes. My dear, I please put your ankle away. I can't I can't concentrate whilst looking down there. And he sort of takes your hands and says, I'm, I'm really sorry to tell you this, but um, my interests lie as elsewhere. I didn't know where, who else to tell, but I feel that we've got a close bond. Who is she? It's not a sheep. <laughs> He's just here. He's here. He's like, can, I, can I create out of drama? <laughs> but he says, Rebecca, please, please keep the secret. I, 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 there was another gentleman here today that I had my eye on, and I couldn't. I would be so publicly embarrassed. Would you help me in this endeavour? What do I get out of this? Out of helping you? Whatever you wish. I mean, I, 
I might be able to help you with some. Uh, I hear your family is into sort of the the military and the army, and I know you are you are our only protection really against against the frogs. So, uh, but we will talk later. We'll talk later. Please, maybe we should get away from your favourite spot. I feel that like we're somehow not as pleasant anymore. If you wish. What we'll do now, so that's sort of the first part in the garden, but we'll continue in the garden because I think we're doing quite well. Um, <laughs> some of us. Some of us. So I'd like to talk about the, the second part of your trip around the garden. After you've taken them to the first place, what's the second place you take them to? And it could be anywhere. It could be like the, the pond, or you could be showing some more topiary. It could still be in the maze, for all I care. So, yes. What is your next course of action, and what will you be doing? Oh, and you all get another point because you interacted with your... NPC. So does this mean... We are now on a two relationship with our... You are a two relationship, and I did forget that you can add that to um, your role. That's my bad, so I'll okay. do that bad. Um, okay. But yes, yeah, so I'm basically trying to do it threes, threes, and threes, and see how that works. Okay, cool. 30 seconds to decide what the second part of a sexually charged walk is, and <laughs> what you'll be talking about, if anything. Okay, and what order are you going in? sexually charged walk now. <laughs> you and... just not sexually charged with you. Sexually <laughs> Oh, oh God. God. Do you wish it? And... <laughs> And do not go. Do not Thirty wish seconds. Let's go. What are we doing? Okay, I'm still definitely still stuck in the maze. So. Okay. Uh, seven, six, five, four. Which order are you guys going in? Oh, I don't mind. You may first. Okay. I do feel like Rebecca going last is quite good. Yeah. <laughs> Martha. You're still stuck in the maze, but you've found a stone bench. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you sort of managed to patch the, uh, the dress problem. In my course tree. <laughs> yes. And so you've taken a uh, veteran to the stone bench. Your favorite. So describe the scene. So what, what is it you'd like to gain out of this? So, well, <laughs> well, spending too much time trying to be elegant and alluring and sexually charged, etc., etc. I unfortunately got us completely lost. Um, oh, oh, silly the, you. Uh, silly me. <laughs> and but unfortunately, we come across a stone bench where we can rest for a second. And so we take the time to discuss his studies and maybe like cross my legs and reveal my ankles in an alluring way. Things of that nature. <laughs> <laughs> things of that nature. Oh, yes, the occult. Yes, the occult. <laughs> the occult and ankles. The occult and <laughs> the ankles. The general direction what, of this conversation. What an interesting concept. Okay. <laughs> Roll 1d10 for me, please. And then add your relationship modifier on top of that. Oh. Ten. Ten. Huzzah! Ten. Full success. So yes, so Bertrand uh, sort of looks deeply into her eyes and goes, yes, the occult is very important to me. I feel that with the right ritual powers and with the help of the, the local sort of, if we have the military behind as well, we'd be unstoppable. Yes, Kronos, I mean, we're, we're trying to get him through to this world and hopefully for world domination. Could you be, and sort of like holds out his hand and he's like, I feel... That's safe with you. Maybe, would you be interested in coming to the next meeting? And then looks at your uncle and says, oh. Uh-huh. <laughs> splendid. Oh, splendid. And he sort of goes a little bit red, but he sort of looks away. But you feel that um, it's gone well. And yeah, you get another point to that. So you're on full. That's good. Um, Only until we marry them. That's up to you. It depends how you get through this I day. I like mine's going to go mad and join the other dimension. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Penny. Blopsy, uh, Pet <laughs> continues through the garden. Uh, see Rebecca. Oh, excellent! Yes. So I'm carrying, I'm carrying Blopsy through the, through the, through the garden, <laughs> through the garden. All, of, all of my attention's on Blopsy, and I'm sort of like, yeah. just, Frederick's like, following. Frederick's, Frederick's lovely, but just don't, don't put your arm around me, yeah. sort of thing. <laughs> just, just normal sort of small talk, and mm-hmm. tell me about yourself, Frederick. Mm-hmm. Uh, why, why would you be interested in someone like me when you are someone so wise? You know the the German la- ladies. They are, there are so many, but none as fine as uh, English roses. <laughs> 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 and you. <laughs> um, I, I I relax a little bit. You relax a bit, and uh, yes, and I, I hear that um, your your mama wishes to um, marry off all your all of you to uh, to you know, wealthy families. Make sure you are taken care oh, of. My so. mama always taught me stories when she travelled. She was a big fan of Frankfurters and told me I would oh, be. Yes, yes, you would also. Yes, I believe. Well, you know they have a saying about German people. <laughs> they like big sausages. <laughs> The best from doing English. Oh, look, it's Rebecca. Let's talk. Let's talk to Rebecca. All right, roll. Like, I see. I see. I see Rebecca. Oh, how appropriate. 
so, so you roll, you roll, you roll to you. I guess. So, what are you doing to? Are you going to just like meet up with Rebecca? No, 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 no. So I'm very embarrassed. Yes, of course. By my, by my very inappropriate turn of phrase. I was like, oh, it's Rebecca. And I do see Rebecca. Like, yes. Whether, whether I can actually notice anything. <coughs> That's a nine. nine. Well, that nine's still a success, but at a cost. As you go towards your sister, I would say that Blopsy sees this moment to sort of escape and just goes, eh, and bites you really hard on the hand. Oh, uh, but it's a really deep, horrible oh, cut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, eh, you little fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so if you put uh, one mark against uh, Sister Injured for you. All right, and then Rebecca, you uh, walk through the open fields to clear my head and make a decision. So, yes, uh, describe this. I guess uh, uh, Marcus is still with you, um, yes. so describe what's, what's going on there. Well, right now I'm having an internal monologue. Of course, yes. Uh, he's just come out to me, mm-hmm. which is fine, except for the fact it's not, because he should be betrothed to me and not some other random man. But mm-hmm. this could be an opportunity for me to use him for his money. Mm. By not taking revenge and telling his secret to everybody we know. Big decisions here, big decisions. Mm. So what's the action you want to get out of this scene? So so Marcus is still there. Do you threaten Marcus? Say, I will expose your secret unless you do something for me. That's exactly what I want to do. Okay. I want to offer him... No, I want to offer him security that I will not tell anyone his secret and even help him as to gain his new suitor. Mm-hmm. But with a price. And what price would that be, can you think? Can't be- decide between money or money. So just money. I want money. <laughs> I mean, money. you could say money or, or a favour to be cashed in at Ooh, a later point. Oh, I like that a lot more. Okay. So I would say roll a d10, then plus your relationship with him, so that'll be plus two to that. So Sick. to roll, yeah. Oh, Sick, I just, I just <laughs> so so that's a, a that's a failure. Straight up. I would say... Your womanly decision causes problems, so if you mark one against that for me. Doesn't find it threatening enough. God damn. No, I think I think I think he goes he goes, This is another side to you I've never I've never experienced. I'm you know what? I'm glad we didn't get betra- Yeah, it's off, it's off. I'm telling my I'm telling your mama and sort of marches back to the to the house. You and fucked he- it. <laughs> you see you see <laughs> Penny from a distance. No, this is, yeah. I like the idea. We recon it slightly. I like the idea. You see, Penny, you see all of this and you're like, you fucked it. And then the rabbit bites you. And you're like, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. Um, so I'd say for after that round, Frankie, you get an extra, you get your point. I hate this. So you've got your point, Chris. I think you're on three for Bertram. Yeah. Um, you do not get a point, unfortunately, because you fucked it. Um, because I fucked it. Oh, yeah. oh, you definitely get a point with Fedra. <laughs> I guess you three sort of converge on the steps with your suitors or now ex-suitors and <laughs> head towards uh, the drawing room and Papa Fotherington Botherington will uh, call this gentleman in and they'll go off and have cigars and whiskey whereas Mama Fotherington Botherington will sort of gather with you in the drawing room and sort of say, so, how did it go? Uh, are, we, are we in the business? Are we, are we ready? Obviously you can tell her in your own time what, what happens to her but she then says, well... We also need to get ready for the, the, the competition today. Now, as you know, it's, you know we've got different uh, dragoon machines from all the other uh, families from around, the, uh, around our estate uh, come in. Actually, let's point. What are the other names of the families oh. we have? Oh, Beastworthy, Fenton, Jones. <laughs> Hang on, right. Beastworthy, what, sorry? Fenton. No, but... Go with Fenton. Uh, but we, there's a Fenton! Fenton. Yeah. Beastworthy, Fenton, Oh, I see. Jones. Um, let's do two more. So we've got Beastly Fentington Jones. Chamomile Camelot. Cam- yes. Cam- 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 Flip flop forthright. Boo! Flip flop. Boo to you! Rosemary and Thimbles. Thimbles. Rosemary Thimbles? Rosemary Thimbles. You can't have the and in a surname. Rosemary and Thimbles. Rosemary and Thimbles. Um, yes, so Mama says, yes, so you know, our, our rivals are the flip flop forthrights. Oh, and they all spit at that, like, hot too. Our biggest rival, <laughs> our biggest rivals. But my daughters, I know you are lost currently without Eliza. But I'm sure this is your time to pull yourselves together and really show how we are the best at <laughs> we are the best at at the dressage at, at the dressage. You know. So what Mama would like you to do is this will be like a planning phase. So you've got the machine out there, and it's, imagine as if it's like a giant master chief 
type robot thing that's the, or a transformer or anything yes. like that. And so you all know your different uh, roles in it. And, it. and I need to know like, what are you going to do in this sort of prep stage? What are you doing to machines? And obviously, which order you guys are in? Sorry, it's a dress art, right? Uh, yes, dress art, yes. Does this mean so, everyone's wearing a dress? No. Dress art is when it's you have like prom to present. 30 seconds, go! It's like a show thing. Okay, I think, I think it's wearing yeah. a dress. Okay. Go, go with me on this. So, okay. Go with me on this. All right. So you put the dress on. Yeah. I clean and load the guns. Yeah. Just, just, just a skirt. Okay. Just and a now skirt. demonstrate. What you know, color Firepower. Oh, yeah. oh. So you choreography. Don't worry, I've got all this down. Dragoon, I'm like, I'm like warming up the ankles. All right, write it down. You got ten seconds. Oh, crap. Um, <laughs> and what order are you going in? Uh, I will go last. You go last. Can right. I go second? Yep. Oh, okay. Fuck. <laughs> all right. Martha, load and polish the guns. So you get to the machine first. These two okay. are probably squabbling or telling Mama, like um, probably about Frederick. And I don't know. Would you be telling? Actually, we'll get to we'll get to that <laughs> when, yeah, in your right. set. So you just go. You just go sort of straight out. So, so you've completed your mission. Okay. So I I leave them. I go to the place where the dragoon is currently mm-hmm. stationed, mm-hmm. and I take the time to meticulously polish and load the guns. Because even though I've never been to a dress art before, I assume there will be shooting involved. Of course, of course. Of course. It is a British sport after all, not shooting and involved. And so, nor describe the gun arrangement. Is it just like machine gun wise, or is it like proper regency, like you have to like clean the barrels? Well, cannon style. Yeah. Or... I don't know, like, what, 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 how would you imagine in, in your perfect world? In my perfect in world? My, oh, <laughs> regency robotics. Okay. <laughs> in my perfect world, regency robotics, so there are two shoulder mounted cannons. Mm-hmm. Uh, two machine gun rotary style contraptions on the arms mm-hmm. and a shoe boot. Oh wait, a, a you, boot gun. Okay, I meant a boot favorite. gun. Can you write all that down? Okay. Because I'm yes. gonna need that information <laughs> yeah. for my bit. Yeah. Okay. I'd say write that okay. down. Write that down, what you're doing, and, and then... Because yeah. it is a dress art, instead of loading it with the traditional 50 cal rounds that mm-hmm. are the norm, of course, of I load course. them with the explosive tips to create a more like pyrotechnic show Ooh, as like it is it. performance art I, of course of course from dangerous your... yet pretty I mean this is, this is the first time you have entered into the dress art so yes. how do you think you know, the flashier with the bang the yeah. bangs are always good exactly All right, so right... oh the boot gun is now a grenade launcher because <laughs> then we could have flashbangs <laughs> okay Oh, nice. This, yes, this could be idea. the end of <laughs> the past as we know it. Please write all that down. <laughs> well, you did say in my ideal world that was a mistake. No, no, I was tempted I... to add more guns, but. <laughs> I feel like you should have added more guns. For those of us who are absent, our Dragoon mm. currently has um, two shoulder mounted cannon style rocket launcher things, two rotary machine guns, one on each arm, and a boot gun, which is a grenade launcher. All of which I have currently loaded with high-powered explosive rounds slash flash bands for the wow effect. Okay. Are we performing or are we just prepping? It's prepping just now. So, that, prepping, so like, that's why. In anticipation of the competition. So I'd like you to roll a d10 for me. But obviously plus nothing. Nothing. nothing blow up. <laughs> oh my god. That's an eight. Oh. Nothing blows up. <laughs> nothing blows up, but you have a cost. Oh, why? Yeah. You take a lot of time to make sure that this mm-hmm. looks and, you know, you like make sure everything's just precise and, you know, these two are like, hurry up, come on, come on, come on. So you, you actually make yourselves late to the dressage competition. So if you put one against that. Late to the party. Yeah. So in the meantime, choreography with arms. Yes. Let's go. Roberta. <laughs> so describe, like, so, cause obviously, so your sister's loading the goods, and if, if anything, you're probably not helping by, like, keep moving the arms and whatnot. But well, what, what are you trying to do? She should have been faster. For exactly. sake. <laughs> Be less annoying. Go away. <laughs> Dear Rebecca, tell, tell me, what is, what is this choreography with arms? Well, since I'm the second older sister, this is actually my second dress art competition. Oh, okay. So I already know what needs to be done. Yeah, I, I like the idea that you've been in like a. This is like the first time the family's been entered into it, mm-hmm. but you've actually been away and been on like, not Team UK, but Team England, uh, <laughs> regional championships. The but. only reason why we came second is because one of the arms exploded. But that's fine. <laughs> that's fine, of course. It wasn't my fault. No. You're only in charge of choreography. Exactly. Yes. So what kind of choreography are you planning for this dress art competition? Well, I'm going to have to allow a few rounds. There are targets located while moving. You need to be able to hit at least six of them Mm -hmm. to pass. Mm -hmm. And then there is a freestyle category where you need to wow the judges with pyrotechnics, Mm. flashbangs, things like that. Uh And also maybe have to protect yourself, you know, show off shields. Ah, yes. So you sort of... 
Yes. Excellent. Yeah. So, and what do your shields look like? Is it like a holographic uh, shield or is it yes. like a... Yes. It's, so it's located on the right arm and it is a giant holographic <coughs> screen. Mm-hmm. Futuristic considering what time we're Oh, yes. In. I mean, it's very forward thinking. Ah, <laughs> yes. Yes. And because of our family, it's a... Uh, Oh, does it have the family crest on it? Exactly. To have Forrington, Borrington. Like, yes. is it like one of those um, fans? Like, if you spin really fast, it will let us see it across. <laughs> you know the, what? That the, is. The, yep. the crest comes across. Yep. I'm just going to write fan right shield. Don't know what that means, yep. but fan shield. Excellent. Love it. So, if you roll a d10 for me, again, not adding anything, because um, you don't have any relationships in there. Four. Oh my god, I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> Why? Oh, just everything I okay. do is a fail. Say, well, that's, that's okay. it's okay, standard failure, You're so there's only fail. one mark. Um, that's what I just said. Yeah. I'm glad we could agree I'm on just something. Saying, why you are bitch? you so surprised? <laughs> I'd say what happens is that. You're practicing the arm moves, but you practice it so much, you're like going it over and over again that actually, well, I said weapons here, but I would say like it jams. So, like, your shield will jam. So, it will just be like fov, 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 you know, not fov, like, bothering them. So, put one mark against that. We need to fix this. Yes. Penny, warming up the ankles, <laughs> putting on a skirt. Yeah. Tell me more. I'm sitting up the skirt on this, uh, on, on this dragoon. It's, it's like a nice chainmail. Mm. It's a lovely shade of purple. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I don't know why it's been nice. Let's just, let's just go with I think, it. I think after the fright that uh, Frederick has given you this morning, you've seen it a little bit more. Oh, yes. I, I, I became a lady. Don't you know? A lady now. <laughs> it's fine. And the skirt comes down. It covers the ankles. But the grenade launcher that's a wonderful, wonderful-ish sister. And Stono, you can just hike it up a little bit. It's just make sure it's nice and loose and all the joints are lubricated and we need to we need to pop something off. It's good. And just Ooh. do the like the sort of like the, the flex thing. Just, just a couple of just just getting the joints going, making sure we're all yeah, so well, my sisters can see me, and so I think it's important that you you get you get the proper. Oh, yeah. Yeah, especially because you know, putting on a skirt on a, such a huge machine, and as as all ladies know, putting on anything it can be restrictive. Whereas obviously in the heat of battle, you know, you're running ahead without a skirt. Like it might be like quite, yeah, whether it's quite graceful or whether I'm kind of like yeah, yeah, yeah. Whether it's like quarter my knickers or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. So. All right, so roll a d10 for me, please. Please, please, for the love of God, for the love of God, guys, for the love of this. This is good. <laughs> oh, yes. not Why am I excited? What? This is bad for all. Oh, okay. So bad. So Size of a failure. Mark oh, two. No. Penny, sorry, could you mark two on the Eternity Reactor hemorrhage? So I like the idea. Oh, Lord. In the middle of like a, a squat, there's a moment where you hear some dragoon go, and it just sort of falters there, and there's like lots of warning lights come on whilst you're in the machine, and it just says, Reactor, warning. yeah, warning. Warning. warning, warning, and you're like, oh, no. I, I hand solo it, I just like knock until it stops. Uh-huh. It stops. Okay. Um, solved? Question mark. <laughs> Question mark. It'll do. It'll do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, with all the preparations in place, it's now time to go to uh, the dress arch competition. Obviously, you guys are all working together to get it there, and then I guess uh, Mama and Papa follow in a in their stately carriage behind. And you get to, I guess, the local village, which has all been set up for the uh, Dragoon Dressage competition. And you see, like, lots of children waving, fruit sellers, people saying, you know, get your dragon fruit here, or, you know, trying to, any <laughs> Dragoon merchandise they are trying to sell, but it's like, you know, fans, that sort of thing. And then, if anything, the fans will probably have, like, their favourite teams on. So, yeah, you've got the beastly Fenton Jones, like, with their sort of weird fan thing. And not so many of the Fotherington Botheringtons, um, I guess because you're a newcomer this year to the dressage competition. <laughs> so, you uh, line up, and the judges, well, they turn out to be, a uh, coincidence, all of your suitors there on the judging panel. <laughs> oh, sweet <laughs> baby Jesus. <laughs> so, Frederick, Hi! Just a sound from the skirt. <laughs> <laughs> like a little bit of air comes out. It's like... <laughs> um, just the exhaust. Round one, obviously, most important part of the Dragoons thing is its ability to walk stylishly around the arena or uh-huh. the, um, the, the town square. So how do you get across the town square and back looking the most stylish you guys can and in what order? Moonwalk. Oh, ready like and okay. so what? We think we should moonwalk, uh, yeah. and moonwalk. then we're gonna. Well, you're the pilot. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we're gonna yeah. moonwalk. We'll, yeah. we'll do it around, and, and then, then again, we're gonna stop right in front of Frederick, and we'll lift the ankle up. <laughs> oh, and just, just, oh, just, just lift the ankle up. I swear to God, I will kill you. No, 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 no,
And then. 15 seconds. 15 seconds. Okay, so we're going to start the moonwalk. Moonwalk. Oh, 10 moonwalk seconds. Ever. Lift the skirt, deploy the flashbang. Yes. <laughs> Whatever she said, moonwalk with right. the other papers. Okay. <laughs> Three, two, one. Peggy goes first. And then if we can wink. <laughs> nah, wait. Can, like, All right, so. What did you pick? I so just got... wrote moonwalk, look at the others. because like... Look at the others, okay. And then deploy flashback. Yeah. <laughs> so Peggy, describe how this huge dragoon from the Fotherington Botherington estate does a moonwalk around the town square. So we step out, just sort of ordinary, just shake it off a little bit. Yeah, and yeah. then in one motion, I spin through yeah. goon. And then I can't actually move more. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. We, so we, we start like, 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 like a yeah. front, and then it's just like a full one, and then it's just, and then we just slide and do a lap. Just do all, all a huge. <clears throat> see, all the other dragoons are sort of just walking on their. Yeah. And then at the back. And so what we do? It's like um, it's like cars when mate is driving backwards, and we yeah, just like, like okay. and we just give like a like a polite wave. To each other <laughs> come past, and then I come around, we stop in, directly in front of the judge's table. Yeah. Come in, and we just lift up the skirt a little bit. It's a little just like. Whew. Excellent. All right. Roll a d10. Yes. Ten. Oh, was it zero or ten? Yes. 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 Oh. So it's a net. It's a net. It's ten. a net ten. It's a okay. Success. This is the thing. The crowds have never seen anything like this. This is unco- This is. Did yeah. we just invent the moonwalk? You, I think we just did. I think yes. Yes. It, it, I guess I don't know what they'd call it. Because <laughs> <laughs> obviously it's not the called the moonwalk. Moon so, I was moon just walk. gonna say <laughs> that. <laughs> Again, the way the, the, the pistons go. So, like, the um, with the other dragoons are sort of, like, they do a steady beat. Mm-hmm. And then with the pistons of the, the dragoon, they sort of... Do, 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 do. So it's like a, a music a sort of Billie Jean comes on. And then you do stop and you sort of twirl. <laughs> if anything, you may do, do, like, a sort of a hat. And then, a, and then a, the, oh ankle, the ankle, the ankle, you go, hee hee. And... And my god, Frederick <laughs> is just already like tens, tens across the board. <laughs> <laughs> the other two are sort of blown away by this blatant oh, sort of like, it's just shocking. No one's ever seen it before, but they don't know how to react, but it seems to have done the job. So congratulations. You. Thankfully, that uh, that hemorrhage thing, the light's not come back on, so like, full success. Yeah. So what are you fine. Doing, Mark? Rebecca, I know you've got moonwalk on here, but Sorry. you also said look at others. So describe what you're doing. As, as you've done the moonwalk aspect. Yes. So now I'm sort of just planning what I'm going to do for the next category. Mm-hmm. Um, and while I'm happy that we've done so well in the first category, I'm kind of looking to blow my sisters out of the water with the next bit, because the next bit is choreography, and that's my special. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea, maybe to sort of win favour with the judges a little bit. So you've done the moonwalk, and everyone's sort of like, ooh, light clap. Yeah. I guess like the idea that so you lift your hand, and you sort of like let your hand, like the dragoon's hand out to have a kiss <laughs> from... Everyone, possibly not your suitor, though. <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh, so, you know, from from the if from I could slap in my wood. So I, I guess you do, that. and you sort of look around at the other the other competitors and try and seek out what they're you know what they're thinking and sort of if anything like an insight sort of thing. So yeah, roll a d10, not plus anything because you your relationship's gone down. Oh, nine. Ooh, that's a nine though. Ooh, Excellent. Okay. It's not a full success. Though. No, but I think that's quite good. So I'd say, so it's all with grace, and you have to look around at the other competitors, so the beastly Fen Joneses, they're sort of like aghast, they're like, I can't believe they've just done this, this, uh, this dragoon, oh, what is it, you know, and they're like, obviously disgusting, writing down on their, like, imagine, like, they're also, like, all free girls as well, but they're all covered in, like, engineering grease, and they're all, you know, writing down on their clipboards as well, uh, the caramel camelots, and they're sort of like, oh, oh. the flip flop. Four frights I've actually left the arena because they again rivals of your own. So as you let your sort of dragoon's hand come out to get kissed, mm-hmm. there is a moment where it stops. So I'd say get one um, put one marker gets disarmed, look quite literal, <laughs> <laughs> and then you go, ah, oh, it's fine. <laughs> look, it's an old joke, old joke. It's fine. Oh gosh, Rebecca, <laughs> deploy flashbang. Please tell me more about how this is happening. I lean back and smack the big red button labelled boot guide. Yes. <laughs> and the flashbang is deployed from the exposed ankle. And I lean back and I say, shout to my sisters, because obviously this is quite large. Yes, girls, we are the shit. <laughs> <laughs> and please please say it again, swag. but actually be posh this Yeah, time. be posh. Right, okay. Yes, girls, we are the shiznit. <laughs> <laughs> From the that's bottom. Not, that's what I assume the posh version of shit is. Shiznit. Excellent. That's a six. six. Okay. Does she get anything? But is my 
my suitor is judging. He is judging, so. and you did do quite well. So that's uh, it's a plus three. It's a nine. But it's only if it's three, then if it's three, she gets advantage. That is correct. Oh. Actually, so roll again. No. <laughs> no. Good. 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 That? that was no a one. one. That would not help. That okay. Would not help. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. When you get three, it's just roll with advantage. Yeah. So. The boot. It takes a second, and you're like, ah, oh, ah. Oh. So I'd say uh, weapons jam for you on that one for one for that. Like because of that nicely prepared thing you were doing earlier, it sort of sparks out. It's almost like a, a proper firework. So it lights you up and it's like a peacock feather. And yeah, your um, Bertrand is again. Oh, yeah. Jolly good. Oh yes. You know that's sort of like <laughs> completely enamoured. Uh-huh. And I like the idea that the bits of the dragoon are like you can see. It's not like a complete like I say Massachusetts, but you can mm-hmm. see in something. Like you can windows. see you. Yeah, so you yeah. can see you. So his eyes lock, and you just see like imagine big love hearts. Uh huh. Like, <sighs> completely enamoured. Uh huh. It looks like after uh, the first round that you are in the lead currently. Um, it better be. <laughs> uh, after you you showed. <laughs> Wait, it's not high five. Is it? As you do that in the dragoon, it actually happens. <laughs> <laughs> like it's self like passed together. So like like a right leg going to like the yeah. left arm. Or something. <laughs> but no, I don't think that's part of the dance with her. Mm. So the next category Can is, as uh, as uh, you predicted, it would be a choreography session. <laughs> so you are given a random piece of uh, Renaissance music, and, you, and someone brings out the harpsichord, <laughs> <laughs> and they get it set it up on the sort of town square, and so. The first couple go by, um, so (laughs) Beastly Fenton's uh, Jones, they try uh, to do the best by getting a bit clunky. They weren't expecting this from a dressage competition, Mm -hmm. you know, why would they? Interesting from the flip flop fall fights and Rosemary and Fimble, a late entry to the to the competition, they actually do a dance together, Ooh. and it's a very much as you can. Is that make, even allowed? <laughs> uh, they think so, and it, like, you know, again, no one has seen this before. So if you imagine, if you remember seeing all the old sort of like Jane Eyre and the Pride and Prejudice in general, yeah, they yeah. do that yeah. dance with the, yeah, hands. the hands. Yeah. It's all that. There's nothing intimate. It's all just like, oh. and again, <laughs> polite collapse. As a go around, what? you, you oh. have thirty seconds to decide okay. what oh. Don't dance move. Have, <laughs> have you seen the Knight's Tale? And yes, yes. thirty seconds. Yes. Go. Yeah. Thirty seconds. So, okay. Go. So basically, it's like this. It's like this old like knights man, and they do like traditional dancing, and then they come and they dance like a modern song to like groom. It's like a dance from the homeland. Okay. So just come in and just do something. All right, like who's modern, going first? You're going first. Oh, flip! What am I doing? This is a your modern show. dance. Oh, modern dance. This is your With your arms. Yeah, I can do some fireworks. Modern... But, like, this is your show. Dance. Fireworks. Ten <laughs> seconds. Oh, and gonna display the shield just because. Mm-hmm. Which? What just kind of dance? Five. Oh, flip. Four, I think we should slap drop. Three. I'm <laughs> twerking. I'm twerking. <laughs> that works. That works. It. I wrote twerking. That works. I'm okay. first, by the way. Just give yes, me a second. Yes, you are first. Yes, oh, that's I fine. I didn't mount the arse cannons. <laughs> I am last. You are do last. not want anyone I to know that. That's fine. What Don't are you worry. doing? I suppose I'm in the middle. You are in the middle. Okay. okay. Hope I've got you, because otherwise this is going to go very wrong. Okay. 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 Right down. We did okay. not discuss this well. No, we didn't. I, okay. I'm, I'm going to go. As well. So, you guys are up. And you enter the, um, the town square. I like the idea there's like a small curtain, but you guys are way above it, so you have to... <laughs> sure. You know, your ankles go through. And it is a silence across <clears> the town square. You know, there's a small child with a lollipop, the lollipop falls. Um, <laughs> the harps call is like, does a... And it's about to begin. Rebecca, modern dance is a <laughs> space shield. Do, ha- don't be fooled by the modern dance. We start off with a traditional dance, uh-huh. but uh, as we are only one person, it's more just a... Pick up the dress, uh, courtesy of Penny, yes, that the dragoon is wearing. Yes. To pick up the skirt. Interesting, interesting. none of the other dragoons were wearing skirts, so it's quite interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't expect this. It's holding the skirt, mm-hmm. walking around, prancing, you know, twirling, usual stuff, whatever yeah. people did back in the day. And then we uh, secretly slipped the harpsichord player some a fiver or something. I don't know. What money Five is a lot use? of money, though. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a lot of money. A half penny. A penny. A penny. A shilling? No, 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 no. You slipped them a penny. <laughs> no, she just took it right I, back and showed him around. I would say, I would say <laughs> how about, how about, you, the harps called you recognise as one of your old uh, suitors that didn't work out per se. You remember the whole, yeah. uh, you remember, you're talking to your favourite spot. So you sort of like, <laughs> you sort of like, you give him a wink and goes, remember our song? And he's like, <laughs> and uh, they're they like, aha! Okay, cool, great. So, so now he's part. playing that song. <laughs> mm-hmm. We invent this new dance. Yes. Known as twerking. Twerking. 
It was originally uh, from the word talking, but we adopted it and did something. What kind of song uh, would the would the uh, hopscotch? What like uh, you imagine like a hopscotch version of, of a, uh, a song? I was gonna say Beethoven's The Fifth, you know the one that but like a proper did, remix. Complete breakdown. Yeah, that one. Excellent. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I will say roll the d10 and for plus one because the hot score person was technically a uh, ex suitor of yours. Oh, sick. Wait, so do I roll this one? As well? uh, d10. Right. I just, I just. I just want to kill myself. Like, why does this okay. keep happening to me? So that's a four altogether. <laughs> Standard failure, just, mark one. Just... What are you on in terms of uh, injuries? Uh, sorry, not injuries, but uh, problems. Uh, weapons jammed. Mm-hmm. Public embarrassment two. <laughs> Disarmed. Gentlemen's dark secret uncovered. <laughs> and the, your womanly disposition causes problems. So I'm going to say, I'm going to give you a mark against public embarrassment. So that is now no, three. Is Wait, what did you do? Oh, public okay. embarrassment. The <laughs> Dragoon uh, Moonwalk was so surprising. They're like, whoa, what next? And then <laughs> now you just sort of go overboard with the, the, the new twerking thing. Sure. And, the, and the small children, like, again, lollipops just disappear. As the mother's like, shield your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Like they're taking, men are looking away, but then looking back and then looking away. <laughs> um, <laughs> dabbing. Oh, <laughs> sorry, no, yes, you yeah. were just yeah. invented. Yeah. That kids is how the dab was invented. <laughs> there is just a shock, and you see your uh, ex suitor just going, <laughs> and sort of marks, writes something on the paper. Doesn't look good. So this is the thing. It's a serious problem for you now. Oh. Um, so that means that something will come up soon that you might have to deal with. Oh, yes, yes, unfortunately. So just keep that in mind. Yeah. Okay, so Martha, you see it's going to shit. Yeah. This twerking, this choreography thing that, that uh, your sister was working out at, it's just not working. Um, the, the kids are looking away, they're screaming, they're running away. In an, an effort doing? to salvage the routine, I rush towards the control panel oh. and hit all the buttons and release all the fireworks <laughs> <laughs> and all the explosive rounds. In a hope to try and like salvage this, <laughs> which is either going really, really well or really, really badly. So it's go be, big or go home. This will be interesting. Okay, one d ten, but you're not, but not, not adding anything. So. That's a ten. Not ten. Come Holy on. Holy shit. <laughs> Can I just ask? Did you just use all of our ammo? <laughs> yes. After the train wreck left by our eldest sister, I had to use all the ammo. I can't defend myself. It was a train wreck. <laughs> right, right, fine, fine, so what, what happens is that you just, you know, everything sort of goes into slow motion and you see your sister go, <laughs> like trying to push it and you're just like, ah, out of the way. And then you start pressing every yeah. single button. And with the fireworks, it's somehow then the dance sort of makes more sense. It's like, there's some... There are fireworks that appear from places you didn't know you put fireworks in. <laughs> it's sort of coming out of the skirts, coming out of the armpits. The head, there was no like hair piece that you put on, but now it looks like there's a crown of like sparks, Catherine wheels s going round. It looks incredible. Like, and, the, and then you know, the kids are sort of going, yeah, woo, you know, and the, the mother's like, oh, it's okay, everything's better now. And so, and there's sort of more nods from the judge. Like, Okay, they brought it back, they brought it back. Holy shit, I can't believe that worked. <laughs> Genuinely, I thought I would blow up half town. <laughs> Penny, break dance finish, please. Oh, oh no! Oh, God. So please just arrive. And now inspired Penny. by the fireworks. Yes. So start doing like that. No, the kicks. Penny. Yep. And then, so we do a backflip. This is just and a head spin. Competition. And then we just sort of like, the backflip, oh. head spin, do, yep. do a 360, and then land and... I was gonna twerk, finish, but that didn't work out. <laughs> and then just, just a little like kick in the ankle, and then stop and pose. The rest of the floor, like, yeah, sure. just, like, like little. That explosions. was your whole break dance routine, <laughs> Jesus. Christ. I kicked, I did a backflip, and like a fifty foot <laughs> oh, robot. Sorry. After <laughs> your twerk, and like we're in a town square. I can't, I can't, you know. It was like, it was like, it was like the finishing touch. <laughs> All right, that's, that's please roll a d10. Not adding anything. You didn't say you we were believe in you, younger sister. <laughs> Oh, please be shit. Just to make me feel better. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Oh. Why do you want us to fail? Because <laughs> we're going down. So that's going down. that's a on. three. No, oh, if I'm going down, we all going down. So that's God. a three. Yeah. What I will say, again, read out your problems that you've got. So I have one on a boring man. Yep. Uh, one on an injured sister. Mm-hmm. 
uh, two eternity reactor hemorrhages. Oh god. And uh, one on a womanly disposition causing problems. Unfortunately, it is going to be the reactor. Isn't it? The reactor. So you get a one yeah. hit to your reactor. So that's now a serious <clears throat> problem. So what happens again? So you manage to pull it off in the sense of like you go, oh, I, I know what to do, and you 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 know, push the legs again using your own legs. But it is a bit more forceful than you expect. So when you land, and it's you try and obviously land in sort of like that pose, but actually sort of land and stamp and. Basically, the cra- the, <laughs> the force <laughs> cracks the whole town square, and then people start running. It's a bit like that scene in um, oh, yeah. Dark Knight Rises, where the, the oh, yeah. where the um, football oh, field goes down. Yeah. Yeah. It's like no, and it's just that <laughs> football person running as a small child, <laughs> 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 like mama, yeah. <laughs> and it sort of cracks the whole sort of, uh, the the town square in two. And the, the judges sort of like look at you, and you see sort of Frederick's so going. <laughs> so Frederick's into it. Frederick's totally into oh it. God. He, 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 I think he thinks those moves will come in handy and then the possible, you know, near future. Oh moves. God! <laughs> Can Rebecca, Martha, and Penny work together and win the Dragoon Dressage Competition? Will they be able to sort out their various suitor issues? And what are the French troops up to? Find out next time on What Am I Rolling? The One Am I Rolling podcast was created, recorded, and edited by me, Fiona Howitt. This episode's players were Frankie Kempster, Roche Melville, and Matt Bateman. This episode's RPG was Pride and Extreme Prejudice, created by Grant Howitt. Pride and Extreme Prejudice is available as a pay-what-you-want product on the Rowan, Rook, and Descard website. That's rowanrookanddecard.com. You can find out more information about Grant's other projects and one-shots on Patreon. That's www.patreon.com forward slash G-S Howitt, and Howitt is spelt H-O-W-I-T-T. The theme music was 8-Bit March by Twin Musicon of twinmusicon.org, licensed under a Creative Commons 4.0 license. If you want to find out more about the podcast, check out the website. That's www.wairpodcast.com. Fancy getting in touch? Email the podcast at whatamirollingpodcast at gmail.com. Finally, follow the podcast on Twitter and Instagram at wair underscore podcast for latest news on upcoming episodes. And remember, adventurers need not apply.